Welcome to Pharmacy View, technology and pharmacy business podcast series, where we provide regular interviews with pharmacists and key industry people within the Australian pharmacy and associated industry. In each podcast, we look to discuss aspects of pharmacy operation and how technology is improving or interacting with each guest's current role or pharmacy-related business. I'm your host, Scott Carpenter, and today's guest is sponsored by Shopfront Solutions, leading the way in digital marketing and communications, providing a cloud-based platform for pharmacies to manage all of their digital messaging and print-based collateral. For more information on the Shopfront Solutions digital platform, simply go to the website at shopfrontsolutions.com.au. Welcome to another episode of Pharmacy View, where I'm talking today with Kavita Nadan and Serge Singh from Locomate, who we met a few months ago. Welcome, Kavita and Serge. Hi, Scott. Hi, Scott. How are you going? Really good. Thanks. Great to see you both. Now, we recorded an episode with you about five months ago about your new platform being launched at APP. And today's our chance to actually catch up and revisit the launch, how it went, uh, where it's all going at the moment. But before we do, let's just take the opportunity for anyone listening today who hasn't listened to the previous episode um, to hear a bit about both yourselves and how Locomat came about. Yeah, so um, let's go back to where it all started. Um, for all of those who um, have probably heard of Locomate but don't know how it all came about, it was actually at uh, in 2020 when the pandemic had started and we were very, very busy in pharmacy. Um, you might all recall it was crazy numbers, volumes in scripts um, and, you know, very hard to have pharmacists on because you were just inundated. So I had actually gone through a whole probably two weeks of locums at that point. And so one day I came home and um, I was actually quite frustrated. Um, and I said to Serge, I just got charged a ridiculous amount for my monthly bill for my um, locums. And he was like, oh, okay. Um, well, how is it any different to any other time? And I'm like, well, this time, like, it's something that's been bugging me for years in terms of, you know, the transparency around it. But this time, like, it was just, the travel I wasn't aware of, the wage, the the rates that they cost me. So as I was sitting there talking to him, we realised that there were so many issues around the whole process. I mean, from hiring the locums in terms of such a manual process to actually seeing what their rates are, where they're coming from, and then um, the ability to leave feedback as well. So as we discussed this, so just like, surely there's something that I can get you that's going to automate that process. Let me have a look. And he's looking, he's looking. No, couldn't find anything. Um, so we searched and then he's like, what would this in an ideal world look like for you? Like, you know, let's sit down and design it. Um, so Serge being, um, you know, tech architect or whatever um, he would like to call himself. She still doesn't know <laughs> what I do for a job. <laughs> yeah. So, um, he sat down and he's like, okay, tell me what how the process looks like currently. How can we make this better for you? So that's when that's when the whole process started. And I'll give it to Serge to talk through how the whole design and MVP and everything else came about after that. Sure. Um, so, look, there are certain products out in the market that do a little bit of it. Um, but when I sat down with Kavi and I said, what should the ideal world look like? Uh, we found there was a lot missing. Um, so that's when we went through the process of, you know, not only talking to pharmacy owners, managers, pharmacists in charge, but we also talked to the locums um, and, and looked at, you know, we need to improve the process for both parties. And, you know, to our surprise, there was just as much frustration on the locum side as there was on the pharmacy side. Um, so that's where we started the process. You know, we had the, we sort of built a prototype based on the, the design that I talked to Covey with. And then we took it to people in the market and on both sides, what do you think? And, the, you know, the feedback that we got was positive from everyone, like, we need this now. Um, so that gave us the confidence to go and start building the product. Um, and what you saw, uh, Scott, at APP was sort of our first coming out into the market, right? Um, that was us sort of announcing ourselves as a product. And if we even look back to what the product was in May to what it is now, it's, it's miles apart. Um, and even then, people were like, oh, this is phenomenal. When can we get it? Um, so that gave us the confidence to... Ensure we started the pre-registration process. Um, we launched on September 27th in Victoria, 
um, as, as a soft launch where we brought up a, a group of pharmacies and a group of locums uh, who have pre-registered, talked about the product, and then we started taking feedback immediately as the product launched. And one of the things that we found was that locums were not happy with the process of invoicing. Um, you know, some say that they spend, you know, they do four to five invoices a week, spend a couple of hours if there's issues that delays payment and whatnot. So we always had, you know, for example, this whole payment thing 12 months down the track. So we fast tracked it. We've actually built it in the last couple of months and it's launching next week into the product where we automate not only the time sheeting, but also the invoicing for the locums as well. So as soon as they finish a shift, uh, submit the timesheet, timesheet gets approved, the system will automatically generate invoice for them. Um, as with you know the, the changing landscape with, with the whole pandemic, um, you know Victoria was the first one off the bat, hey, we need every pharmacist to have their vaccinations done, at least the first shot by uh, the 29th of October as an example. So we're like, okay, what, how do we do this in the system, right? So within a week, we had automated a process in the system to collect uh, verification of vaccinations. Um, so if you think about the data collection points, you know, we've now got a database where we can um, ensure that every locum that's walking to a pharmacy meets those compliance requirements. And not even only that, like, you know, now we've got the data to be able to say to um, pharmacists, hey, you're due for your booster in this time, or, you know, you might be due for your first aid or CPR, etc. So that's where, where we're heading um, with everything. Cool. So I think I might just jump in there then and just, I guess, ask a couple of questions back. So you mentioned that the platform has changed significantly and you and you mentioned a couple of the things that have changed from that. But um, is the platform today significantly different to what you think you were launching or is it just better in a whole lot of areas? Yeah, so the core product is the ability for a pharmacy to say, I need someone, a locum to say, yep, I'll grab that shift, go work that shift, you know, and do the time sheet. So the, the core product is the same. However, we're making the experience better each time there's an, you know, we roll out an update because we're getting feedback. And, you know, we had a suggestion from someone saying, hey, it would be nice to say, I need someone for COVID vaccinations. So we added that feature in. So the product itself is not different. It's just, we're improving the experience elements and more data elements for both parties. So that way, you know, we set out to make the experience better for both parties. That's going to be a journey for the next, forever, right? Uh, the product is going to be the same. However, that experience changing and making it better is forever going to be improving uh, time after time. Cool. So, and you mentioned there is one of the um, changes or significant changes was the locum invoicing. So you're right. Th this has got to be a platform that helps both parties uh, work better. And again, um, I know as a you know, a, a consultant subcontractor in a couple of businesses that I involved in, in the, you know, you, you, you've done a day's work, you get home, oh, gee, I've got to do my invoice or I've got to do, um, you know, the, the paperwork that's needed for me to actually get paid. And then there's the delay in payment. So do you envisage that this actually really uh, fast tracks that? Because I guess from a locum point of view, um, whilst you have a relationship with pharmacists, if you get an opportunity to, to work with someone that's paid you very quickly, you're probably going to jump back there first, aren't you? Exactly, exactly. So, for us, it's about providing those insights back to the locums when they're looking for shifts as well. So if we, you know, let's fast forward 12 months down the track because with anything in IT, you need data to be able to provide patterns um, and say, hey, you know, there's a job that matches. Here's a group of pharmacies that actually pay within a certain amount of time. Um, so that may say, oh, I will actually go work there, maybe for, a, a, you know, a bit of a lower rate, but they pay quicker. So it's just allowing the locum to make a smarter decision based on what they need um, from their career and what they're doing um, and making the data available to both parties as well. So that way, you know, to a store when you're about to post a shift, hey, actually, if you pay quicker, <laughs> you get better locums um, and, and all of that data comes to play, right? So um, that's how we're looking to improve the process for both parties. Yeah, and, and I think, again, that's, that's, you're right. It's, it's about both parties here because the pharmacy has the need um, in terms mm -hmm. of customers, um, patient health care. Um, the locum is a business in their own right. They're also very you know, passionate about patient health care, but their business is actually providing um, their service support to a particular location, a particular point in time. And I've noticed recently, obviously, with the, uh, the requirements for COVID vaccinations and, and I guess the country has opened back up because it's summer, 
summer, um, I'm certainly seeing quite a, a lot of activity around emergency locums you know, uh, all around the countryside. Um, there's also been some articles um, around social media around a bit of a shortage of pharmacists at the moment. So how has your platform, I guess, been involved or handled these emergency situations or these, um, I guess, shortages? Have you been able to kind of fast track some things there or are you finding it a bit of a challenge as well at the moment? Um, so from a, uh, our rollout perspective, because we've only been in the soft launch phase, we sort of haven't scaled to look at the emergency um, locum services at the moment, purely because we haven't scaled that that large. Uh, what we are doing to prepare ourselves for that is we're actually collecting the data up front. So when a locum signs up, we actually ask them, hey, do you, you know, so if you're signing up in Victoria, are you looking to work outside of metro areas? Would you consider relocating for a week to four weeks? Would you consider relocating for longer than four weeks, right? So when we reach that scale, what we will have is the data in the system to say, hey, we need an emergency locum in a particular area. We've got X percentage of locums on the system that are willing to relocate for one to four weeks plus. We can reach out directly to them because the system makes it easier because we have the data in place. Um, so we're actually preparing ourselves to meet that requirement in the near future. Uh, but just during the, 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 the short term uh, phase rollout, it's sort of haven't been as part of that plan yet but we're preparing for it based on the, the, the data that we're collecting. Uh, we have noticed um, the shortage. Um, in fact, we've noticed a pattern where because of the, everything opening up and um, locums being in high demand, the average rate has gone up significantly um, because locums are now saying, hey, there's so many opportunities to pick from, you know, I can have the option of picking something that pays quite well and then that pushes the average up. So we can monitor all of that because we've got the data in the system to be able to do so. Um, and that's the insights that we get, right? So if we fast forward um, 12, 24 months down the track, you know, we're, we're very heavily focused on artificial intelligence and machine learning to be a key component of the product, right? So imagine when we have all of this data over 12 to 24 months and you're a pharmacy and you're like, oh, I want to pay $50 for a pharmacist for an hour. The system will tell you, these are the type of pharmacies you can get and whether they're available or not. Uh, and you can change that rate and this will tell you, okay, so let's just say you just need someone who's more process driven, uh, works in the dispensary and doesn't really need to go out and, you know, and deal with customers face to face that much. That profile would be, might be a good match for a certain rate. And we'll tell you, but hang on, you are going to leave someone in the pharmacy by themselves. So they're going to be the face of your pharmacy for a day or a week then the system can give you feedback about what type of rates would attract the right person. person. That yeah. doesn't exist today, but we need the data to be able to provide that insight. No, but that's really cool. And again, as you've been talking there, I, I guess what's come to my mind then, and I know a lot of pharmacists, as you, as you guys do as well, and I know quite a few people in the locum arena, is it too early to differentiate like do you have pharmacists that are specifically looking for those long stints versus pharmacists that are looking for the days here and there like is that is that also a, a data um an analysis that's going to come at some point in time yeah that's correct so we're building to collect that so one of the things that we noticed at app was the interest from pharmacists that work full-time maybe four days a week who are interested in picking up a shift here and there um so one of their biggest frustrations was uh, the feedback that we got directly from them was if we tell an agency that we might be interested, they just get calls all the time when they might not be available. Um, so their feedback was this platform will allow us to just, when we're ready, we'll get notified that the shifts are available via an email, but then we can just go and grab it when we want to work, right? So it's almost like we're opening up this additional layer, um, a, additional pool of talent, essentially, that may not have been in the market before. Um, and on the flip side, yes, we, we are collecting data. We've even been contacted by people that are saying, hey, I would be open to do long stints in other parts of the country. Uh, that's great. And again, it's certainly, I guess, it's, it's almost like your brand name uh, has hit the nail right on the head, hasn't it? It's, it's a mate for locums. It's a mate <laughs> yeah. for farmers. So, uh, exactly, good. exactly. And, and then as part of that, we're, we're making sure we're, we're getting constant feedback from both parties to be able to, you know, we're not going to stop. Um, and, and that's one of the things I picked up with some of the um, software that I saw in the overseas market. They've, they solved the problem and then they stopped, yeah. right? Um, and 
for 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 me who's been in in you know startup land with american startup companies for over almost two decades now uh you never stop you never stop innovating right and that product is always evolving it's never it still delivers the service that you need to deliver day one however the way you do it changes over time to meet the different requirements for both parties and the thing is like you know with um with the amount of pharmacy schools there are in the country right now, the amount of graduates that are coming out every year, when we talk to students and we've hired like four students now as part of our team to really get some insights into student life, um, we're finding that, you know, something like this where they have the ability to choose their hours, choose their rates, choose when they want to work, it just really appeals to this new demographic demographic of pharmacists coming out and so you know um interns are registering now towards the end of the year now so we should you know potentially the marketing now will be around getting these interns onto the platform you've got the ability to as things open up to travel to make some money um because ultimately you still want them to stay in the pharmacy profession and this will help to address some of those shortages that we may be experiencing because there's an option for them to go out and get jobs, even if it's short term, even if it's one or two days a week, but it's on their terms, which is what what this whole new era is working towards. We want that independence, and this is what Locomate provides. Mm, and I think you know we've in other industries we've heard the term you know the gig economy. Like Lo- 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 Locomate has essentially been around for so long, and it's the gig economy in ph- uh, in um, pharmacy. In pharmacy, so. It's been around and it's how do we utilize that and best deliver that as a service um, to the industry. One of the key focuses for, for us has been, you know, we've heard a lot about the skill shortages and the thing is, uh, you know, uh, some industry body needs to do something about it. Uh, for us, it's like, well, let's collect the data and see what that data tells us mm. and, and how we can try to address this at the root cause uh, rather than just look we, at high level stuff and, and yeah. figure you know, let other people figure out, let's be part of the solution, right? Yeah. From there, so um, I guess from APP, you, you received a lot of good fa- feedback, a lot of um, uh, valuable feedback. Has um, what's come as a result of that now in terms of where where you're at? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, we met a lot of groups at APP and made a lot of contacts, key contacts as well. And you know, we made sure that once we uh, left APP, we got in touch with these people, kept the communication lines going. And so what that's allowed us to do is, you know, with the trial phase, obviously do that with a, a small number of groups, but then now talk to these other uh, groups and start to get things rolling as well. And so, you know, it's, it's really opened up that opportunity, which we thought would take a, a much longer time to get, you know, a lot of these groups and pharmacies on board, because the thing is in pharmacy that, when you have that trust and it builds up, then people will be willing to jump onto that and um, give it a go. So uh, what we found when we have spoken to a lot of the the ops managers from these groups is there's just been positivity. It really has been like, when can we start? And it's like, we want to give you the best um, experience possible. So let's hold out and wait for, so this automated invoicing piece, we're like, we just want to get this out there because then it'll give you that holistic experience rather than having to stop and start everything. We actually slowed down the rollout yeah. to make sure that we could get the, the payment service in. And people are like, no, 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 we want to jump on board. We're like, no, it's about the right experience. And if that means waiting four weeks, we wait four weeks, right, um, to, to be able to deliver that and just everyone gets a better experience. Um, one of the things we learned at APP was we thought we would have to, you know, uh, approach each individual pharmacy and give them the benefits of Locomate. Um, what we learned at APP was that the the pain that the stores felt was being felt at head office, right? They can't they can't find people. So we got approached by, like Kavi said, op- operations managers, group managers, even BDMs saying, hey, we need to talk because, you know, we've got 30 pharmacies, 100 pharmacies, 200 pharmacies who all feel this pain. So how can we work together to deliver this um, service to our groups, uh, the group of stores. So that's actually fundamentally changed our delivery model based on the learnings from, uh, so we're working with the groups to produce documents, training. So that way, when the, uh, when we're ready to launch with that particular group, the, you know, the, the group managers email the, the, the stores, how to uh, create an account, how to post a job. So all of that is sort of the, that process that we thought would take us much longer um, and um, has actually changed since APP because they've come on the journey with us uh, rather than us just trying to sell the benefits 
you know, to everyone, they actually saw the benefits and come on the journey to, to be able to help change the market. And it's been really interesting because um, Surge has been so personally involved. Say, you know, say a locum signs up, he will call them and, and have a chat and they're just like, oh, wait, there's an actual person involved. <laughs> like, no, there's no robot, robots <laughs> just yeah. doing, um, punching out, you know, shifts, etc. So I think that personal touch has really added to the experience and this is what's then flowed on to other other group um, owners and, and other stores as well. And they're like, you know, all these people we haven't even heard of or seen before and they've just started signing up. They're like, wow, because news travels fast in yeah. pharmacy land. So <laughs> I remember getting a call actually. Um, so the first week we launched, um, we had a group of you know, the stores that had their locum. So like, oh, we'll put the shifts on the, on the platform, see how it goes. And the, the locum called our landline number. I'm like, oh, that's our first call ever on locum, mate, right? <laughs> so I picked up the... The, the phone and he's like, oh, have I reached uh, Locomate? I'm like, yes, it's Surge, you know, the, and he's like, so I got an email today. I'm like, yes. <laughs> Tell me about my shift tomorrow. I'm like, yep, we send a 24-hour reminder automated by the platform. He's like, I never have to set my own reminders to remember where I have to work. <laughs> this is brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> and this is just a small. Such a simple yeah. aspect. <laughs> and, and so that was, that was awesome feedback. And yeah. then, and then yeah, so, we, you know, everyone that signs up, I try to send a per- the system sends automated email, yes, welcome them to the platform, but I try to send a personalized email to everyone that's joining as well to know that there's a person because we picked it up very early that people just think it's an app and there's no one behind it. From that perspective. So if I'm a locum, uh, just take me through that journey. But but before you do, I might just ask the question. So if, if I'm a mature pharmacist and I already work three or four days a week and I've got Fridays available, can I set that Friday up on my profile to only get emails for the Friday? Does, does that make sense? Correct, correct. So the journey of onboarding a locum, uh, when they first sign up, you know, they put the email address in, select that they're a locum. We verify the email, mobile number, then we collect ABN details. Um, so once the formalities are out of the way, we say, what days are you av- available? So they can tick any day from Monday to Sunday. Um, and you know, one day Friday, as an example, is the only day that they're available. They set their rate. So the minimum, um, the rate that they're after, including super that sets on the platform. Now, pharmacies then post jobs on the platform. We send three emails a day with matching jobs. So if the job doesn't match your day or rate, or and rate, sorry, should I say, yeah. you won't get that email as a reminder. You always have the option to log onto the platform and see the available roles. So we set it into two criteria, or two categories, should I say, yeah. matching and other roles. So you might not have any matching roles because nothing matches your rate for a Friday. However, you might have other roles that may be paying, let's just say you want to $55 an hour, and this role on a Friday is paying $50 an hour. It will be available in your other roles. You can actually go in and accept that role if you wanted to, but you will be paid at the lower rate because that's what the pharmacy's budget is. So we're sort of trying to open up both ways, right? So just because your expectation of a rate um, doesn't match, you could say, oh, look, I've got no work tomorrow, I'm free. Do I earn nothing or I can um, accept that rate? Um, so we leave that flexible uh, for both parties, but the reminders will only come, the matching uh, jobs, if the, the your availability rates and, and that matches. From that perspective. Look, um, we're, we're unfortunately coming to the end of our time, and I always enjoy our, our conversations and chats. And, yes, K- Kavita, I, I do intend to come over and visit you at some point in time, and, and hopefully before yes, uh, we're well know, restric- restrictions, yeah, at, uh, at, at very hectic in the lead-up to Christmas at the moment. But I, I guess the um, what I'm hearing today is you're, you're almost a business strategist's delight because you've got word-of-mouth marketing. That's what's happened, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. And that has that is what has happened. Um, you know, we have we have put a lot of effort into marketing as well. But the thing is, I think with us being so at the forefront of everything and meeting with a lot of BDMs, meeting with ops managers, it's really allowed us to build up that confidence and build up that trust, as we say, um, so that these these groups can really adopt us and start start that journey with us straight away. So, you know, we've already got groups lined up now that are going to be onboarded um, and it's just they're just willing and ready. And so hopefully this just creates that flow on effect. Um, 
So, yeah. Continues to grow. No, look, that's great. Um, again, mm-hmm. as always, it's been great to chat today. We'll make sure that um, in the show notes that we include um, the links to your LinkedIn profiles and the links to your website. Um, but again, I, I will continue to watch this with interest. Um, and I've no doubt that you've already got your APP stand booked for next year again. So uh, anyone that's yes. listening today <laughs> that... Uh, that uh, but, you know, potentially hasn't um, uh, caught up or, or hasn't kind of had a chance to look at your website yet, then at least there'll be also a chance to catch up at APP next year. Great to chat today and thanks very much for your time. Thank you so much, Scott. Thank you, Scott. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening today. Pharmacy View is a technology-focused podcast provided by Melbourne-based business Arian Technologies and Shopfront Solutions. Over the podcast series, our guests include pharmacists, retail managers, wholesalers, suppliers, and industry technology partners. If you would like further information on our podcast series or to participate in one of our episodes, feel free to send me a message or touch base through the Pharmacy View website, pharmacyview.com.au.